Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Some of you may recall, at the same time that Sandy Hook happened, a, a disturbed person in China took a knife and tried to kill, with a knife, a bunch of children in China. But most of them survived, because he didn't have access to a powerful weapon. We maybe can't save everybody, but we could save some. Just as we don't prevent all traffic accidents, but we take steps to try to reduce traffic accidents. So the sociopath cites communist China as the goal for American gun control. Welcome to the Savage Nation. This is a new low for America and a new uh, a example of the sociopathic behavior of the commander-in-chief who has a vendetta against all things we hold dear. Does the sociopath in the White House also believe in the First Amendment, as he said of the Second Amendment, but think that a modest background check should be conducted by his government goons before any of us uh, have a license to criticize the government or he himself? I'm not saying that we should eliminate the First Amendment. It's right here on a piece of paper. You have a right to speak. We're just asking for a, a simple background check on your right to speak. A small step to control the incendiary language out there. That's what they do in China and other dictatorships. They don't criticize the president anytime they feel like it. They don't incite people to anger. We're asking not to take away the First Amendment, but just one small step to civility in the New World Order. This is the Savage Nation. This is no longer a laughing matter. I told you that he's a crazy man. I told you he's a sociopath. I told you he wouldn't stop. I asked you last week, what might the sociopath do in his last year? Well, today you saw the sociopath full-blown. Crocodile tears crying, shedding tears. There were no tears when Kate Steinle was gunned down by an illegal alien in San Francisco. No, he didn't have tears for Kate Steinle because it's a sanctuary city created by he and his goons. And it was a gun that was stolen from a federal agent who never went to jail, by the way. No, the great president didn't even call the Kate Steinle family and offer condolences. Obama shed tears today, tears of joy. Tears of joy came out of his eyes as he savored and reveled in the disarmament of American people. He's been waiting for this day. He's been waiting, Mr. Satan, to go around the Constitution. He's been waiting to abuse the executive order power. Now, I've studied executive orders. I told you yesterday this was tried by other presidents, and the best example of Executive orders that were overridden by the Supreme Court. The single best example is that of Harry Truman, who tried to take over a steel plant during a strike in order to control the strikers and went to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court said, no, no, you can't do that. You can't make law. Now, Obama knows that. He's a very smart man. He went to Harvard. He went to, he went to a day school in Honolulu, courtesy of his wealthy uh, uh, parents, uh, grandparents. There was no mother, you see. She ran off with someone and ditched him. That, of course, left him scarred completely with a lot of internal rage. But we won't go into the psychology of the madman today. We'll talk strictly about the issue at hand, which is the mental illness in the White House that is being inflicted on the rest of us. And I think we've got to play some of the sound bites, and I'm going to tell you where I've gone with this. Very straight up front, I'm a direct guy. I have an article I posted on michaelsavage.com, and I also put it up on Facebook. And it's called How Guns Save 20,000 Jews from Extermination by the Nazis. And I put it up for one specific reason. I want you to share it with um, liberals who are afraid of guns. Somehow most liberals fear guns, and I know the reason why. But they should know that during the Holocaust, 
Well, I'll tell you the story as we go on. You know what the Holocaust was when six million Jews were exterminated by a fascist government. And by the way, there were eight to nine million non-Jews exterminated by a fascist government called Nazi Germany. Non-Jews. So about 15 million people were exterminated by the, by the Nazis, including the Jews uh, and all those who opposed uh, Hitler. But the point is not about Hitler. The point is, is that guns were used by Jews who fled into the woods of Poland, actually Belarus. They fled into the woods. I'm going to tell you about them. The most famous group that I know of is the Bielski Partisan Group, the most significant Jewish resistant effort against Nazi Germany during World War II. We hear all the time that the Jews didn't fight back. That's a, that's a myth. That's a myth, a total myth. They did fight back. See, after the Germans slaughtered these guys' parents, they were simple men, by the way. The Bielskis were not rich men. They were not elitists. They were simple men. They were local guys living in a village. And after the Germans slaughtered their parents and two brothers in the Nora Grodek ghetto in December of 1941, three surviving brothers of the Bielski family, the names wouldn't mean anything to us, they're great heroes, Tuvia, Asel, and Zus, established a partisan group. They fled into the woods. They fled into the woods to save their own lives and those of their immediate family only. And they fled into the Zabielovo and paralyzed forests where they formed the nucleus of a partisan detachment consisting at first of only 30 family members and friends. But how did they survive in the woods with guns? How did they get their guns? There were no guns allowed in Russia at that time other than uh, shotguns. They had no guns. And in addition to food, the first thing the Bielski brothers realized they needed were guns. And so they had to either break into farmhouses and steal them or lay in wait for the Nazis and knife them in the neck and steal their guns. That's right. Ordinary men, ordinary men like you, had to kill in order to live. Kill or be killed. Kill or be killed. But it was the guns is the point, you see, Mr. Obama. Guns saved 20,000 Jews from extermination by the Nazis. That's not to mention the millions of others who were saved by guns and bombs from our uh, military and from the Russian military, the British military, the Australian military, the New Zealand military, and all the others who fought this scourge of Hitler. It was guns who saved everyone. It was not hot air, and it was not tears. It was certainly not crocodile tears. But I'm getting off the track. These boys, the Bielskis, were just a Jewish farming family in a village. They knew every tree in the woods. They knew every reed of grass in the swamps, and that's what saved them. Because they were familiar with the geography, the customs, and the people around them, they were able to elude the German authorities and their Belarusian auxiliaries. With the help of non-Jewish Belarusian friends, they were able to acquire guns, guns, guns. And then the Bielski partisans later supplemented these arms with captured German weapons, Soviet weapons, and equipment supplied by, yes, you heard me, Soviet partisans who gave the Jews guns to fight the Nazis. You can read all about this yourself. There was a movie done on this with uh, a great movie called Defiance. It was fabulous. Just fabulous movie. You ought to see it. You must watch it. You must watch the movie with Daniel Craig. It's an incredible movie from 2008 called Defiance. And the point of the movie is that they saved 20,000 Jews ultimately from extermination because of guns. So when I hear from a madman like Obama that he believes in the Second Amendment and he points to a piece of paper, every, every fiber of my being goes into an alarm mode because I saw Hitler do a similar thing when he came back and pointed to a piece of paper. Yeah, and I saw others point to pieces of paper. I've never seen a dictator do something illegal that they claim was illegal. Have you? Have you ever seen a dictator do anything illegal? For example, when Hitler invaded surrounding nations, he didn't say he was invading them to take anything. He didn't. He said this is a perfectly legal move on the part of the German people to recapture territory that belonged to Germany. We have no intent to harm our friends in Czechoslovakia or in Poland. We're simply 
taking back what is ours. And I have it on a piece of paper right here. This was our land. It's just like the bullies that I grew up with in my neighborhood. Inevitably, a bully would never strike a smaller kid without first coming up with a pretext for hitting the smaller kid. They would make up a reason in their sociopathic, cowardly minds for attacking the smaller kid. And then they would attack the smaller kid after they stated their big lie. The sociopath in the White House did the same thing today over and over and over again. One lie after another. Now, let's not go into all the details right now, but I have to play a soundbite for you where, again, he acts like the madman he is. Clear as a bell for any doctor to see. Listen to clip number zero two. I believe in the Second Amendment. It's there written on the paper. The it paper. guarantees a right to bear arms. No matter how many times people try to twist my words around, I talk constitutional law. I know a little bit about this. <laughs> you studied it to destroy I, I it, you pathological liar, you. You studied it to destroy it, you but pathological liar, you. But I also believe find ways to reduce gun violence consistent with the Second Amendment. I mean, think about it. We all believe in the First Amendment, the guarantee of free speech, but we, ex we accept that you can't yell fire in a theater. Yeah, can't yell fire in a theater, but you can yell fire in the White House. Oh, yeah, you could yell fire in the White House every day. You can set the nation on fire, pitting black against white, gay against straight, old against young, young against old. Yeah, you can set the world afire, pitting Sunni against Shia, laughing all the way to the, uh, to the restaurant with your sorority around you. But again, I have to say, does this sociopath also believe uh, in the First Amendment, but think that a modest background check should be conducted by his government goons before any of us be able to criticize the government or him. And by the way, as we get into this and dig down into the deepness of this uh, executive action by the madman, you will find out that um, his government goons have the right to declare you mentally unstable and prevent you from owning a gun. Again, this was something that was done in the Soviet Union. I'm not being an alarmist, I'm a realist. It starts with very small steps. Smaller steps indeed than you could ever imagine in a nation that is as polarized as this with the protections that were built in by men fathoms, fathoms beyond this little man, this tiny little man, this evil tiny little man from God knows where. We have a constitution that was fashioned by great men that is being dismembered by this little tiny psychopath or shall i call him a sociopath as we did yesterday name calling is not going to get us where we need to go what will get us where we need to go is the law the law and nothing but the law and this little man from god knows where knows that he violated the law he knows that this is illegal he knows that a president cannot make law he knows all of this and the goons around him mean nothing Loretta Lynch is a low-grade lawyer from the bowels of the New York court system, handpicked by one of the scummiest people on the planet, that be Al Sharpton, to be our attorney general. She was never qualified for this position, and yet there she sits as though she is a legal expert. Has she ever written the paper that any, any jurist in the nation would ever quote? No. Another unknown, low-grade night school lawyer, now the number one cop in America. Remember what the number one cop in America did almost the first day uh, that she was appointed? Remember what she did? She threatened anyone who said anything about Muslims. Do you remember that? The very same Loretta Lynch that said she would prosecute anyone who said anything about Muslims. Do we have that soundbite, Robert, for the next break? That was from a few months ago. That was a huge story. This very same jackal is going to tell me that she has the law on her side when she violated, when wanted to violate the law on the First Amendment. I should believe her on anything with regard to the Second Amendment. Again, I want to go back to the beginning for all of you good liberals out there who are gunophobic. And when I say that, I envision Woody Allen or Larry David. I see totally neurotic individuals afraid of their own shadow who are very wealthy, who hate the very audiences that made them rich, and more especially seem to hate the nations that have given them such incredible, 
incredible power. I'll be back.